Hi, I'm Johnny Nomega, and we're in Nomega Recording Studios. We're going to go over mastering a song today. Thanks for coming back and joining me once again. We're going to be mastering the song that we mixed last week. Now, first thing in mastering a song is choosing your platform. So that will be choosing your platform. You could use Pro Tools and get a lot of nice RTAS plugins. You could use New Window or Wave Lab, use DirectX plugins, uh, VST plugins, or Steinberg products. You could use audio units, depends on, you can use Digital Performer. So choosing your platform. I like Pro Tools as well as New Window because you can layer the track on top of each other, do a lot of cool phase reverses. But today, I decided to go with Wave Lab. One thing I love about Wave Lab is the metering. With Wave Lab, before you even hear the music, you can look at your meters and tell what needs to be done. Now, of course, hearing it makes a, a world of difference. I love the fact that I don't only have to go by my ears. Even though I have great ears trained over a decade in the music business, it is great to have meters that can assist me throughout the mastering process. Before we get started and actually pull up our first plug-in, I'm gonna tell you to keep it simple. Over processing your master will make it muddy, not give it that clean or even that rugged sound that you're looking for. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to add an EQ. We have a great mix to begin with. We're gonna play it here. And going back to the meter, you can see here that I can see in Wave Lab my pan, my pan opacity, how strong my pan is or not, my volume, my channel, my potential volume, my overall volume, as well as the frequencies that are being covered. So I can see the frequencies that are being covered, where my frequencies are, how large my phase is, or my spectrum along with the frequencies and the decibels of each channel, the overall volume, once again, the pan, and the opacities of each track. I'm gonna turn the music down, and even without the music playing, I can see that I may want to get a larger spectrum, add a little to my low end, clear out so I don't have that big arch in the middle of my, my mid-range to get a flatter frequency. Um, and my output is looking good. So we're gonna turn it back up. I want it to have a clean sound, so first thing I'm gonna do is bring the EQ. And you have to decide whether you want a sound that is more rugged or a little clean. In this case, we want a little rugged, but we want it to be very clean. So we're gonna go to a Waves Q8. You can use any EQ. I like this one because I can select the first and the last and I can put shelves and passes. So we're gonna first start out with a high pass shelf and a low pass shelf. I'm gonna adjust my low pass shelf because I don't wanna kill my high frequencies. I just don't want them to be everywhere. Same thing with the low frequency. I don't wanna take out my kick drum. I don't wanna remove my good low frequency and bass lines. I just don't want it to be everywhere. I want a nice, tight, clean sound. When it's everywhere, it sounds real muffled. So it's a trick that you can use that will allow you to instantly clean up your mixes. Next, I'm gonna go to stereo imaging. And I'm gonna use a trick, I'm gonna actually go to mono. I have a mono button on my control. If you have a Mackie control or a C control, they have mono buttons. Those mono buttons utilize them. So you can hear how well you sound in a PA system or performed at a venue, as well as how wide the stereo image is. So the mono, listening to it in mono, can let you know if your stereo image is too wide. So if I've adjusted it, so I've adjusted it in mono, and I hear that it cleared it up just a little without making it too thin. Now I'm gonna go to my stereo spread, go back to stereo. So I turn my mono button off on my control, bypass the effect, turn it back on and it sounds great. Beautiful 
Now I'm going to go to my L3 Maximizer. You can instantly see it begin to affect my spectrum. One thing you don't want to do is to use a maximizer that compresses so much it begins to gap your frequencies. And what that means is it almost phase reverses them inside out so it begins to sound hollow. You want a point of maximization without over tilting and over compression and getting that hollow woofing sound. Lastly, I'm going to go down here to my dithering. I'm going to add a Waves IDR dither. Turn it to 16. And what your dithering is, and the reason we add dither for those that are, no, I don't want to say that. You said that. We're going with a Waves IDR dither. Remember, we recorded this song in 24 bit at 48 kilohertz. We're mastering it in Wave Lab at 24 bit. 48 kilohertz. CD quality is 44.1, 16 bit. So the dither chunks out bits that I won't say we don't need, but to actually allow it to be clear, adds a little white noise to make it smoother, uh, to allow it to be a little smoother and dithering down or going from a higher frequency and bit rate down to a lower bit rate. Thanks, that's how to master. I'm Johnny Omega, and remember, dreams can come true. Can y'all hear the difference? That's what I'm the man. Don't mistake a louder volume for a better signal. It's a common mistake. You add a compressor or an effect and it sounds louder so you think it sounds better. That's not true. Listen to it at a minimal volume and then truly decide whether it's better or simply just louder.